Um, Headmaster Shrimp's over there. Hmm. I mean, I already, you know, have proof it's none of us in multiple different ways. Of course you would be in here. This is the Headmaster's room. I've heard an awful lot about it, but this will be my first time seeing it for myself. Hmm. Huh, Makoto, it's you. Oh, Byakuya. <laughs> well, you came to the right place this time. Would you like to see something interesting? What do you mean, something interesting? Take a look at this. Take a look at this! It was on top of that pathetically or ostentious desk. Class 78 Student Registry? It contains profile pictures for all of us and Mukuro. In other words... Apparently Class 78 refers to us. Wait, when we found Mukuro's profile in Kyoko's room... I see. That's right. It also mentioned Class 78. This must be where Kyoko got that page. And since the rest of our profiles are listed in here along with hers, there can be no doubt Mukuro was a student here at Hope Speak Academy, just like the rest of us. Mukuri Kisaba, the 16th student. Watch out. Uh, that must have been how Kyoko learned about it. It seems that Kyoko was in a hurry. Hmm? What do you mean? I'm talking about when she stole it. The uneven tearing, the way the paper had been crumbled, she must have been in a hurry. Well, since she snuck in here to get it, I'm sure she wanted to get out as fast as possible. But what? Oh, wait. Apparently that was Makoto. Okay. But what's your point? She was in so much of a hurry that she only got the first page. The first page? What is this, Phoenix Wright's bullshit of adding an extra page later? Correct, Mukuru's profile actually contains two pages. What? So, in other words... When it comes to this profile... There was more information about Mukuro that we didn't still have. What kind of information is it? Why do you ask me to explain every little thing? You can read, can't you? It seems to be some sort of detailed report put together by the headmaster himself. Interesting. I don't know what kind of man he was, but I'm glad he left us with an interesting clue. I was half listening to Byakuyan as I skimmed through the report. Mikuro reappeared suddenly in the background and entity f floats close, but just out of reach. The entity known as the Ultimate Despair. That's what Mikuro looked like? I didn't see that coming, to be honest. Why? Right now, just doesn't look what I thought she would look like, considering she was, you know, a, like, soldier, What do I you guess? think she'd look like? Buzz cut? Not really buzz cut, but like, you know, not hair down that far. Um, right now I can't be sure if a single person or some kind of group. Whatever it is, Mukuro definitely has some sort of connection to it. I have a bad feeling about all this. I need to push forward with my research into the ultimate despair. I need to pay attention to Mukuro's behavior, too. This is just my gut feeling, but I think she's dangerous. Despite the countless battles she must have gone through as a member of Fenrir. When she entered Hope's Peak, she didn't display any signs of battle wounds or scars. That fact alone proves her tremendous skill in battle. Naturally, I want to believe in her. She's one of my students, after all. But if I decide she's a danger to the other students, I will be forced to take all reasonable measures. Mukuro was a part of the ultimate despair. I don't think there can be any doubt about it now. But wouldn't that mean Mukuro and the Mastermind were allies? So why? Why would they kill Mukuro? Plus, even the Headmaster seemed to be afraid of what Mukuro was capable of. They would have had to take her completely by surprise to kill her like that. Or maybe it means the Mastermind is even stronger than Mikuro was. What? What's wrong, Mik Makoto? Huh? That's fine. You seem to be lost in thought, but I should probably point out that point out one other thing. There's another bit of important information within that file that you should note. What is it? Did you notice the picture in there? A picture of a girl perhaps you've never seen before. <laughs> a girl who seems to be included as part of our class number 78. That should be enough for you to figure out who the girl is. Hmm. And further information about the girl is included in the file. 5 foot 7 inches, 97 pounds, and even lists her vitals. Is that the right word, vitals? Yeah, it's one of the words. Oh, I've never heard that before. Biaki is only using it because he's fancy. I've only ever heard that. When I think of vitals, I think of, you know... 
blood yeah. pressure and things like that. Yeah, he's well, being extra. Well, what do you think? What do I think? You're, are you asking me, like, if she was a nice body? Stop you hopeless idiot. What I'm trying to tell you is maybe you'll want to keep that in mind for later. Maybe you'll make your way back to the corpse and maybe you'll think, oh, could that mean... Wait, is he trying to say... There's a chance the body is an actual Mukuro? Is that what he's trying to say? Personally, what I'm thinking seems all but impossible, but wouldn't hurt to confirm, right? It's all clear now. That's all I'm trying to say. What do you... What you do with that information is your business. So I'm back to being Byakuyan's air boy. Hmm. Oh, and one last thing. It's a bit of advice from me to you, so I suggest you pay attention. Advice from me? You seem to be getting along with Kyoko quite well. It's not that we're getting along, it's just she's done a lot to help me. Hmm. Well, don't put too much faith in her. Huh? Another the cost of that faith might be more than you can afford. What are you saying? Just what I think. Call it a hunch. A hunch. But my hunches tend to be proven right. The advice is free this time. Take it or don't, as you will. I'll keep it in mind. Thanks. Where you need to be stopped. in the 8th student registry. Apparently that's us. It has profiles on me and everyone else I met at the beginning in Mukuro. Just like us, Mukuro is apparently a new student here at Hope's Peak. Mukuri Kasaba part of the Ultimate Despair, which means her and the Mastermind should have been allies. But then why would the Mastermind kill her? Weren't they friends? Uh, they're despair. I don't think they give a shit about friendship. I know. There are trophies even shield on the display case. That sword looks familiar. Uh, there are documents scattered over the floor, so I mind it makes me feel anxious. Yes, this is the last thing. The bookshelf seems really well made, and it's filled with files and thick books. Don't be thick books. Don't be. Dong, bing, bong. I'm trying to sneak around the school, Makoto, but my ass is a dummy. So. I couldn't remember the exact thing. My bad. Um, the clap of my ass cheeks keeps alerting Monokuma. Yep. Uh, did Hagakuri never do investigation? Uh, what do you mean? Did we ever meet Hagakuri? No. Probably what not. The Hagakuri is... He barely investigates anyone. Any case I would anyone. imagine he would have been like trying to feed the chickens or something. <laughs> Hard. Is your investigation coming along nicely? You're a very good girl, but you need to go. Well then, since you're all giving it your best, your generous headmaster will give you a little hint. <laughs> For those of you who are interested, please make your way to the gym ASA possible. What? Now he wants to give us a hint? It's suspicious, there's no doubt about it, but this could be a trap. But even knowing that... He said to go to the gym, right? Idiot. Oh, hey, hero! Huh? Makoto! Why do you act so surprised? Um, oh, uh, no reason! You heard Monokuma's announcement, right? Are you here to find out what he has to say? I... I... I just did, actually. I'm on my way out. You already talked to him? What'd he say? Listen, sorry, but I... I gotta go! Hey, Hero, wait! There's no point in trying to stop him. He ran off like a frightened animal. Hero? It was like he was trying to avoid me. I was hoping to talk to him about the notebook I found in the locker. Has he been hiding something this whole time? Mm -hmm. Hey, it's the death sound. No, this is specifically the sound played for scenes like this. Where it's a cutscene and he pops up. I am Monokuma! Oops. Hello, welcome, welcome, hello! Are you ready for your final hint? 
Uh, it just so happens then to be in the envelope on the ground in front of you. The envelope? <laughs> Ready for the final hit? It's in the envelope on the ground in front of you. The envelope? There's an envelope on the ground in front of me. Yeah, Gabe, this is your play. <laughs> envelope? There is no envelope <laughs> in front of me. There is no war in Ba Sing Se. Nobody dies in Danganronpa. <laughs> and just so you know, I won't be answering any questions about what you find inside. What? Yeah. Don't worry, just get on with it. It's just pictures of naked mice. <laughs> That would be great. Monokuma's cryptic words didn't make me feel any better, but I picked up the envelope and I opened it. What I found was a single photograph. Look at this graph! It featured a bunch of faces I recognized extremely well, and some I didn't. Um. I find this picture really funny for one good reason. What? Bitch's face is being covered up. I mean, yeah, that's because Taka has to salute in a picture. Taka is great. He is my favorite. And he's dead. So, I like how in the background, you know, Toko and Byakuyan are hanging out together. I like um, how everyone's wearing the school uniform, except for Hagakure, Celeste, uh, and Leon. Uh... uh... I mean, Sakura's trying to wear the uniform. <laughs> yeah, she's trying, so I'll give her that. That's why I didn't include her. <laughs> they but they're just blatantly not wearing the uniform. Like, they definitely could have made Sakura a uniform that actually fit her. <laughs> so I guess this was just because, you know... she just likes having her arms exposed. Yeah, so just... Alright. Feeder shared a bunch of faces I recognized extremely well. It was everyone who had come to Hope's Peak at the same time as me. Wait, but... There was somebody behind Sayaka. She's the only one I don't recognize. Wait, that's not true. I do recognize her. That's right. When Byaka and I were in the headmaster's room, we looked at that file. Mikuri Kasaba? Then this girl was... Mm. Why? Why is Mikuri here with everyone else? And even more than that... Just having everyone here pose like this is weird enough by itself. We're all wearing matching uniforms. I don't remember anything like this. And now that I'm looking at it, it's not even everyone. I'm not in the picture. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 15, 11, 15. Yep. I mean, we could be behind Sakura, to be fair. <laughs> or behind Taka. <laughs> With his being in everyone's fucking way. I'm the only one not there. The picture has all 15 other students, but not me. But I guess that makes sense. After all, I don't remember ever taking a picture like this. I went to junior high with Sayaka, but the first time I met everyone else was when I arrived here at Hope's Peak Academy. So it's natural for me not to be in the picture, but what's definitely unnatural is that everyone else is in the picture. I thought everyone was like me and didn't know each other until they got here. But if this picture is real, then could that mean... Could it be that everyone else and just me? Everyone here except me is... How long are you going to keep up this rambling soliloquy of yours, Hamlet? What are you gonna do? You're kind of getting in the way standing there, you know? So, I mean, get out. But I told you I'm not fielding any questions. What kind of mystery would this be if I gave you all the answers? That'd be totally out of left field. And not like Leon's kind of left field where he fucking hit the ball. The Yeah. I guess... This means he's done talking. Damn it. Group photo is mad to the truth bullet section of your handbook. So in the end, all I found is the gym was even more confusing. 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 <laughs> confusion. And with that confusion in hand, I left the gym dejected. What happens if we just take the picture? We did. How? Well, did we? Yeah. I thought we were getting in the way, so everyone else is gonna... No. How does this count as a hint? It just made me more confused. Is that what Akuna was going for? Did he put together a fake photo just to confuse me? Everybody's hint is different, so you got to keep yours. 
Oh, okay. But it looks so real, so full of life. How could anyone fake that? I mean, yeah. Which would mean everyone but me. Maybe I should just go ask everyone directly. That would clear all this up. No, I have to clear this up. Let's do this. Who the fuck is in here? Yeah, of course you are. Oh, Byakion. Listen, do you think we could talk? Byakion? I have nothing to talk to you about. Don't talk to me as if we're friends. Hey, Byakion, wait! But of course he didn't, he just walked away. What the... Why was he acting like that? Like he was purposely trying to avoid me. Okay, that works. All right. There might be someone in here. Hey, idiot! You feeding birds? Hey, hero! But Kyoto! What's going on with you? Every time I see you, you freak out like that. Um, no, I... Uh, no. Sorry, but I'm in a big hurry. Once again, he ran off like a terrified rabbit. Hero, what's wrong? I still wasn't able to talk to him about the notebook I'd found. It was like he was avoiding me. Like he was afraid of me. Why? I decided to visit the biolab one more time. The first thing I saw when I got there was her passed out again. Huh? Toko? Guess what? Best yeah. character! Yes. Toko, are you okay? Up. No. She's not dead, is she? Huh? Oh, it's so cold, I think I might catch cold. If you keep taking naps in places like this, I'm sure you will. What? I was asleep? Oh, I must have fainted again. Uh -huh. I bet you were standing there staring at me, getting all excited, weren't you? No, I wasn't. No, oh, then what? Hot and bothered? Straight up horny? <sighs> um, okay, so why did you pass out? I don't know. Last thing I remember was me waking up just now. What'd you do to Miss Morose? Oh, that's right. Your memory stops and starts each time you switch. Bingo bazinga! We share some basic knowledge, but our memories are very much separate. And you don't say like it's a bad thing. It's a blessing as far as I'm concerned. Because even if she forgets something, I totally remember. So it's like double the memory. Um, no. It's more like half. Genocide Jack's memory. But all I want to know right now is where's my little darling? Tell me now or I'll slit your throat! I don't know. I'm sure Byakuen's around here somewhere doing his own investigating. Ooh, yes, yes. By himself? I assume so. Oh, I knew it! I totally knew it! I'm a total pro when it comes to all things master! <laughs> anyway, I gotta hurry. I can't even imagine how lonely he is right now! Toko shot off her eerie laughter echoing behind her. I totally forgot to ask her about the picture. Well, there's no point asking Genocide Jack anyway. Besides, I have more important things to do right now. Why did Toko faint? There's gotta be some reason for it. It's almost like a corpse. Oh my god, a dead body, ladies and gentlemen! The fridge is open! I'm sure they were all touched shy the last time. <laughs> what? <laughs> That flub. Touch mm. shite. Shut tight last time I was here. That must that be, must why, be she why she passed. passed. It's not you, sir. That, that's that's fine. Oh. 
Right. God, she faints so easily. Kyoko. It's getting late, isn't it? Are you okay? I'm sorry if I made you worry. No, you don't have to apologize. But listen, about this room. Oh yeah, it's... It's a morgue. Yeah. I suspected as much. And Toko must have looked inside the fridge to see what was in there and, well, there you have it. You knew she'd fainted? I was on my way here when Genocide Jack came running past me. I assume she must have sneezed, but once I got inside, the real reason became clear. It would seem... I imagine she came here to investigate, and when she opened the slot there... That's when she saw the dead body inside and dropped like a bag of rocks. Why is everyone gotta be so difficult with her? Anyway... Anyway, we Why is everything close it up. Her? Don't want to leave it hanging open like that. Yeah, good idea. Give me a hand with this. Kyoko approached the fridge, hands outstretched, but suddenly she stopped. What's wrong? Listen. Maybe we should wait a second before closing it. Huh? How come? Because Mukuru's body is in here. Mukuru's corpse? Mukuru's body is inside the fridge? I see. Just like every other time, the mastermind probably brought it up here while we were in the class trial. The mastermind did it? Because they assumed we wouldn't be doing the class trial over again, I suppose. So... You may be right. Either way, now I can finally get a good look at the body. Oh, that's right. Kyoko didn't get a chance to check the body during the last investigation. Makoto. I need to do my own examination of the corpse as soon as possible. I'm going to find a clue this time, and I'm going to grab the mastermind by the tail. Okay, so what should I do? So then. Why don't you just wait over there? I'll let you know as soon as I'm finished. Just wait over there, that's it? You know, and I think I've seen a tarp like this somewhere before. Ah, it's the same one, exact same one I found in the garden tool shed. If I remember correctly, that tarp has stamped on the said biolab. And that's the tarp that was used to help camouflage the murder in the garden. At some point, someone got it from the biolab and took it over there. Tarp has been updated to the truth book section of your handbook. Well, okay, that one's almost like that should have been the last time I came here. Um, I should ask Kyoko about that group photo. After all, she's in it too. Not to mention her diary. Don't want me to interrupt your investigation, but I want to talk to you about something. Uh, what is it? It's about that announcement Monokuma made earlier. You mean the one about a hint or something? I, I didn't take him up on the offer. Huh? Why not? Because... The only reason he'd give us a hint at this point would be to confuse us to cloud our judgement. I can solve this mystery on my own without whatever hints he may have to offer. That's a good point. I wish I could go back and do the same thing, but what's done is done, I guess. Standing here looking at her, I don't think she's hiding anything from me. She right? Did the mastermind forge that picture in a trap to confuse us? That's gotta be it. There's no other explanation. The fridge meant for storing dead bodies. I can't do it. I can't look inside. On the left side of the fridge are a bunch of little blue lights. It would, seem... it would seem the blue lights come on when a slot is occupied. So when someone's in there, the blue light comes on. Looking around the number of lights that are on, including the Kuros, there's nine in all. Nine. Nine lights, nine doors, nine hours. Nine days. Biolab lights have been updated. Ooh. Okay, Makosho, I'm done. Already? Jeez, that was fast. Indeed. Anyone can do good work if they're slow. In that spirit, I'll make my report brief. So, did you find anything? Indeed. I paid careful attention to the wounds and the traces of blood, and it seems highly likely that the stomach wound and blow to the back of the head were inflicted after death. Really? The burnt tissue made things a little difficult, but I'm completely confident in my findings. So that means neither of those were the fatal injury, right? 
then what was the fatal injury? The only other option is those other wounds, but the file said they were old. Is that right? Where does it say they're old? Huh? Because all the Monokuma file says is they were inflicted at least several days ago. I guess I don't see the difference. Wrong. Well, the difference is immense considering the impression they give. Listen. You seem to be equating several days old with simply old. However. But that doesn't quite follow logically. Old wounds makes it sound like they've been there forever, like they're not related to the murder. Are you saying they are? But we all got the Monokuma file right after she was killed, right? So if the wounds were at least a few days old, there is no way they could have had anything to do with it. So then. But what if Mukuro herself wasn't killed within the last few days? What? At the very least. Certainly you can allow it as one of the many possibilities, can't you? One of many? Right. A detective doesn't have supernatural powers, so there's no way to predict the answer from the beginning. Instead, the ideal detective begins by imagining as many possible scenarios as they can, In other words, then envision these possibilities without prejudice, without bias, using only their logic and common sense. Then, as they investigate, they test what they find against each of these possibilities. <laughs> of course, me telling you this doesn't mean you'll be any good at detective work. But beyond using that to solve this particular mystery, you should keep it in mind for the future. So, Nike would probably make a good cop, right? Probably. Yep. I, I'd imagine he'd make a good cop, and she'd make a good detective. Which, you know, sure he is, but you know what I'm saying. Gyoko's account has been added. So, if there's anything else you'd like to know about the condition of the body, now's the time. Come to think of it, there was one thing. Earlier when I was looking at Mukuro's profile, it listed her weight and height. So... 5 foot 7 inches, 97 pounds, vitals were 31, 22, 32, did I get that alright? You remembered all that? They are indeed consistent with the corpse. So then... And don't forget about the Fenrir tattoo, that's absolutely no mistake. Indeed. Our victim is, in this case, without a doubt, Mukuro Ikishaba. Okay. Uh, that's the information we needed, because now we know it's actually Mikuru, not just somebody else with the tattoo. And? Is that all you wanted to add? Yeah, I think so. so then. then it looks like we have no further business of Mikuru's body. Let's get going, it's kind of chilly in here. Wait, are we not going to put the body back? Do you think it's kind of sad waking out like this? Why? Sad? Did you forget she was our enemy one? A part of the ultimate despair? But she still got killed. She's still a victim. Hey. Have you ever heard the phrase, you reap what you sow? Well, yeah, but still. <sighs> you really are naive, you know that? It's really quite appalling. But she could have abandoned me. But she decided to help me instead. For so oh, for someone like that, what would it mean to be naive? So then. I think we've done all we can do here. Back to our separate investigations, yes? Uh, hold on. I still have one more thing to do. Something I need to talk to Kyoko about. <sighs> about why I always look so freaking ridiculous. <laughs> need I her ask think about the photo's pretty book. cute. Okay. I didn't say he was ugly. I I'm said he was I ridiculous. He's ridiculous. Look at that Although face. Although I will question why his zipper, why his jacket hood has a zipper on it. <laughs> yeah. Could you zip it all the way? That's kind of yes. weird. But pop I've, off. Also, I've why does it have cufflinks? It's a hoodie. Oh wait, no, he's got a jacket over the hoodie. Yeah. Why do you have a jacket <laughs> over your hoodie, my guy? Uh, okay, Cassie, first off, fuck off, you you don't know style. Second off, I've actually seen jackets before that actually zipped all the way up, though they were typically, like, girl ones, and they had little, like, eye holes on them. Like, not eye holes, but, like, those, like, mesh things that you can also, see from the Also, why outside. are there drawstring holes, but there's no drawstring? I mean, 
Do you understand how many hoodies I had that no longer have the drawstring? I know, but like, nothing about this, his fashion choices make sense, but I still love him. I think he's adorable. I mean... He's just got bad fashion taste. Okay, well, you can fuck off, because I also wear hoodies and jackets together. <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> the jacket's there to keep the water out, because hoodies do not protect against rain. Yeah, if but I that's like a now, fancy jacket. It's got cufflinks. I don't know how much yeah. that would protect against the rain. Uh, a fancy jackets are very good at being water resistant slash proof. Mm. I can't leave. You gotta oh, talk to her about that. Right, door. yeah. Sorry, I was too busy staring at him. <laughs> hey, Kyoko. I do have one last thing. I know I shouldn't, but I feel like I have to ask. Go ahead then. Out with it. Have you really not seen your dad even once since you got here? What? What? So. What do you mean? Well, you know all the walkers in the second floor of the dorms? I do, yes. But to get to into any of those lockers, you need the handbook of whoever the locker belongs to. Actually, I managed to get in them using the emergency handbook. The one you found in the headmaster's hidden room. And? So, did you find anything worthwhile in the lockers? lockers. I found a pocketbook, and after looking through it, I think it must be your pocketbook. Why is that? What makes you say that? Because... Like I said, only the locker's owner should be able to get into it, right? I can't imagine those lockers belonging to any of us. Belong. After all, we only got access to that area just recently. What I'm saying here is there's no way I could have had access to any of those lockers. And if I did have a pocketbook, why would I bother putting it in a locker? Locker. Everything you said just makes perfect sense, but there was something written inside. It was written about the headmaster, about your father. If that's true, could that mean that video is real too? Video? I think it's finally time to. It's here. Yeah. It's finally starting to fit together to reveal a cohesive picture. Okay. Although, I'm afraid that picture might be worse than anything we could have imagined. What are you talking about? I need to go investigate those lockers right now. So she's going to try her student ID on it. I need to confirm what you just said with my own two eyes. Oh, let me give you the headmaster's handbook. That way you can... So... That won't be necessary. If I'm right about this, I shouldn't have any problem opening the lock with my own handbook. After all, it would seem that it's my locker. You're a walker? If you watch this, it'll all make sense. Finally, use for the AV room! Again! Oh, yeah. the first motive. Yeah, yeah, I'm saying that after all this time. A DVD? And it says Class 78 Urgent Interviews? I found it in the hidden room after you left. Anyway. I don't have time to explain exactly what I think it means, so just watch it and see for yourself. I think you'll realize exactly what it means. You'll understand why you found my pocketbook in a place none of us have ever seen before. None of this makes sense right now, but I guess that means there's some important clue in this DVD. Interview DVD has been added to the Truth Bolt section of your handbook. Makoto. Oh, and now it's my turn. Do you have a second to listen to me ramble? Ramble? In other words. So, as it turns out... The arrangements I made didn't stick. What I mean is, I'm less and less sure of everything, even my own feelings. You're talking about your dad, right? I can never find the answers to the questions I wanted to ask for the rest of my life. You're talking about your dead father, right? Dad Just after no everything she says. <laughs> Just like your dead wife? Huh? What? No, huh? What? Sorry, uh, Persona for uh, him, Stacy. At least I make references to things that we both know. Well, maybe if you bothered watching that brilliant, brilliant comic dub. And all because of the I mastermind. Am. But there's one thing I am sure of. When it comes to the mastermind, there's no room in my heart for forgiveness. I, I swore to destroy the mastermind. This is just one more reason to follow through on that. Yeah, because I burned with the fire of determination. I was genuinely worried about her. I don't know how eyes can be on fire. That must have hurt. 
the determination to defeat the mastermind. Also, as we all know, determination is dangerous. Undertale. It's strange to be confronted with his death and suddenly feel this way. I couldn't care less if my father had found happiness. Why? So why is it... Why does it bother me so much to know how he suffered? Well, I mean, he died pretty damn fast, so he didn't really suffer much. He literally was a person, went up in the sky, came back down, and was just bones. I mean, you can definitely suffer before death, Cass. Nah, you it's know. Not, it's not always physical suffering. Nah, seeing his students, know. Seeing his students be put into this kind of situation, I'm sure. Nah, he should have be... bucked the fuck up and not died like a pussy. <sighs> it's ridiculous. There's just no understanding it, I guess. She let a small laugh as she said it, but her smile was filled with sorrow. So, that's it for my rambling. There's still much to do before I consider my task complete. Yeah, you're right. But keep this in mind. There is only ever one absolute truth. Whether that truth serves justice or suffering, whether it's the greatest truth or the worst, what do you mean? Makoto. Even if the truth you uncover is filled with hopelessness, you still can't give up hope. Absolutely not, because, because all I can ever do is keep moving forward. That's pretty much all I'm good at, you know? <laughs> Indeed. Sorry if that was strange. So then. Anyway, I need to get going. I'll see you at the class trial. Leaving behind that final farewell, Kyoko was gone. If you I better get going trial, myself. I'll give you some of this bomb pussy. I worry about you. Thanks. I got that DVD from Kyoko. I should head to the AV room to check it out. I'm glad this time he doesn't go like, "Huh, I wonder if there's somewhere I can watch this." <laughs> Kyoko mm. said something about hopeless truth, but no matter what happens, I won't lose hope. Even if it's the worst truth in the world, I can't afford to lose hope. Seriously, I'm poor. I would not have been able to afford here if this wasn't a scholarship. Cool. Well. To be fair, I don't think any of the Ultimates pay to go to school here. Because it's so prestigious, yeah. you just get yeah, to go for free. I, what I was saying was that, like, we would not have been able to afford if they were charging. This nice of a school? Hell no. I mean. This private high school? Hell no. This should be able to play DVDs just fine. I mean, hopefully. Well then, I'd better take a look. Monokuma just walks in and blows up all the equipment. Self-destructs. I took the TV Kyoko gave me and put it in the player. It said that it was playing, but nothing appeared on the screen. I stared into the black of the monitor. It must have been only a few seconds, but to me it felt like an eternity. And then all of a sudden, an image appeared. Sayaka? It took me by total surprise. I hadn't seen Sayaka in who knows how long. And there she was. Okay, Are you ready to begin? That voice is familiar. Uh, that's just because it's Mondo's voice actor. Yeah. I but, I know. Yeah. And I'm, I'm just sitting here like that voice is very familiar. Dangan Rampa reuses an extreme amount of voices. Yeah. I was just expecting it not to be two in the same game, two yeah, important I know, characters. But no. You'd think so, wouldn't ya? Like, two important characters, one who we heard through the first, like, quarter of the game, and one who's important at the end of the game. I mean, to be fair, we barely hear the dad talk, which is probably why they figured it was fine. Yeah, but come on, give it a different voice. The man I heard was of the... the voice I heard was of the man in position on one side of the screen. It was the voice of a middle-aged man. Also, apparently with the dubs of Danganronpa, they're not, like, officially licensed dubs. So any voice actors that had to work on them had to do so, like, under the table. Mm -hmm. They can't be, like, associated Credited. with it. Yeah. Yep. So it was probably just easier for them to get the same person to do multiple people. Yeah, that's fair, but everything should be officially licensed. They couldn't the officially license Tongarampa for some reason. I don't remember why, but... It sounded like he was trying to make a joke, but Saka's tense face didn't move a single so millimeter. Is meant to serve as a kind of contract substitute. It's not that I don't trust you guys, 
It's more like insurance. So please don't worry too. By the way, this sounds nothing like Mondo, but it does sound exactly like the voice that Keith Silverstein, the voice actor, does for Hawk Moth and Miraculous Ladybug. God, it sounds just like his voice for that. Ugh. Okay, I hate to tell you this, but my mom's been watching two... Oh, she's already finished, I think, two seasons of that in the past few days. Good. And yeah, I realized it. Good. 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 She started watching with yeah, Ava. Yeah, did you also realize that Cat Noir is Makoto? So, that's fun. Bryce Pappenbrook. I, I did notice that. Yeah, yeah. I just... I can't make that kind of reference to my mom, though. Or to yeah. my niece. You just be like, hey, mom, you know that show you're watching with that villain dude? Yeah, he voices the headmaster of a school where kids are forced to kill each other. Uh, <sighs> it's crazy. No, I've, I've, I've literally tried to mention this game before, and she told me it sounds fucked up, and she didn't want to hear about it. I'm like, and then also he you voices a little read... Swedish tinkerer no, man. No, 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 wait a minute. You read mystery novels with constant murder in them. Nice. Don't start on me. <laughs> Seeing it is different than reading it, I guess. I mean... You've seen their quote-unquote blood in this game. Yeah. I mean, there's red blood, though. I mean, when? On the floor? In the classroom? Oh. On the floor in the yeah, No, floor that's strawberry jam. That's strawberry jam. No, it's not strawberry jam. It's boat nectar. <laughs> Come on. Right. I said that when we got there. I don't Where? think I have to voice that. I hope I don't. I don't fucking remember your voice. You died no. forever ago. It's It's your voice. Yeah, it was just regular. I that's why I got my list because I knew that this was gonna happen. This one, so I was like, "Fuck." Now then, let me get straight to the point. There is a chance that you may have to spend the rest of your life here in the school. Can you accept that? Um. Yeah, no. <sighs> you want me to accept that? Sayaka was obviously at a total loss. It made total sense. Who would agree to spend the rest of their life in the school? I accept. Wish I'd given what? my regular voice to one of the characters that's still alive and didn't die immediately, but that's Well, fine. that the reason you gave Sayaka yeah, your regular voice is because she's regular girl kind of thing. Girl next door was going to be dead within an hour of the game, that kind of thing. Thank you. Yeah. And I'm sorry about all this. Well, I can promise you that I will do everything in my power to keep you safe. As the headmaster of Hope's Peak Academy, I give you my word. Also, I just remembered, but Gabe, one of the students from the second game, voiced by Alia. So, that's going to be fun. You know, Marinette's best friend. Ah, Marinette's best friend. It. Yeah. So, that's going to be fun. As if on cue, that's where the video cut out. There was a lot I hadn't understood up until now, but this, only this. I simply couldn't comprehend what I'd heard, because I know how much Saka wanted to get out of here. I know how much she wanted to escape and pursue her dreams with her friends again. She wanted that so bad she tried to frame me for murder, so why? Why would she say yes to living here for the rest of her life? As I sat here thinking about it, I noticed this sudden light. On the monitor, the video that I thought finished flashed back on the screen for the next person who's... Man, yeah, okay. As if I was... And if I was confused before, what I saw next pushed me right over the edge. Huh? What I saw was me, and possibly undeniably me. Before we begin, I should let you know that I'll be recording our conversation. Yes. Me and Makoto, <laughs> me and Headmaster, <laughs> looking at each other. <laughs> he and I were having a conversation that looked like what happened. When, you know what I'm saying? But I, die in the here and now, had absolutely no memory of it. I had no memory of even meeting the Headmaster. Much less sitting down to talk to him like this. Shall we get straight to the point? Makoto, there's a chance you may have to spend the rest of your life here in the school. Can you accept that? Yes. This can't be real. I said yes? The real questions we should be asking is why the fuck Makoto's wearing a dress jacket over a goddamn hoodie? How about this? You shut the fuck up and let Makoto talk. No. Once he explains the fucking fashion choices, then he can talk. I will do everything I can to protect you. As the That's not a lot, buddy. Academy, apparently. That's the very least I can do. Okay, so he just says the same thing for the most part. Once again, the video cut out. From there, the video repeated the same scene over and over again with the others. Byakian. Toko. 
Kitty, Hina, McGee. everyone. They all said they'd agree to live in this school forever. And then... Kyoko. Her interview with him had been recorded just as clearly. Without a doubt, she had met him. She'd sat down with Headmaster of Hope Speak Academy, her father, and when he asked her his question, she answered the same as everyone else. She accepted a life within the school, just as Kyoko's interview was wrapping up. The monitor suddenly went black. Huh? It wasn't just the monitor, the DVD player itself had apparently turned off. Which of course meant the DVD wasn't playing anymore. What the heck just happened? Oopsie, looks like it broke out of service! What? It just so happened to break just now? Now then, when? It doesn't matter. Failure can strike any time and anywhere. That's what failure is, right? Failure, my ass. You cut the power on purpose. Well, whatever. Even if I watched the whole thing, it'd just be more the same. He'd ask them the same question, they'd all say yes. I couldn't help myself. I let out a huge exasperated sigh, but as I did, I remembered something. That's right. Would seem... Hey. The convenient outcome. Something that seemed to, to obviously work in the favor of the mastermind. So does that mean I've lost my memory too? What about the others? Have we all forgotten? Or... Interview DVD has been updated. Dong, bing, bing bong. For anything that has a start, there has to be an end. And if the end comes, then that means it's time for a fresh start. There is no night that doesn't have a dawn. Although that dawn is totally pitch black. There is no storm that won't eventually end. Of course, then that leads to drought. But as I said, every end is the promise of a new beginning. Which is why I'm sure we'll get to meet again. Because the end is only the beginning. Anyway, let's get started. The beginning of the end of the class trial. Everyone gather once again at you know where. Is it the bathhouse? We're gonna go yeah. see Alter Ego. Is he back? Yep. <laughs> uh, it's about time to begin again. The class trial is gonna start. The final class trial. The last time all of our lives will be on the line. The last time hope and despair are on the line. I don't have a choice. I have to do this. Okay then. This is the end. we come in here. I guess I'm the first one this time. You're early, Makoto. I mean, it's just on the hall. Does that mean you feel prepared? Yeah, for now at least. But where's everyone else? Why aren't they here yet? Don't worry, I'm sure they'll be here soon. And just like she said... Byakia! Byakia? They arrived one after another, and they were all in the same state of shock. Hina? Hero? Silence. And it wasn't any normal silence. It was the deafening silence of fear and suspicion. It was like the first class trial. You called for me, and so I appear. I'm late! That was really bad. Well, fucking how the fuck am I supposed to read that? I'm late! A uh, strong, silent master, so wonderful, so cool, so hot, my loins are ablaze. Yes! Now listen, everything will be fine if you just leave it to me. My beautiful With my scissor sharp scissors in hand, I'll stab and gouge and sift the master of evil. But I thought you couldn't kill anyone but adorable little boys. <laughs> If that's what Master wants, it could be a boy, girl, or anything in between. I can handle it. Didn't you get accused of... It doesn't matter. That's unfortunate time. <laughs> Where am I? 
<laughs> no human language can describe the disappointment I'm feeling right now. This is my new favorite reaction image. Kyoko's That's great. great. That's why she's one of my waifus. Although, to be fair, all three girls that are left are all my waifus. But no. <laughs> is everyone here? Owen wearing our gloomy ghost faces, I see. Okay, well then, let's begin. This final class trial is going to be slathered in a pitch, black despair, climb, climb maximum sorrow. You're right, this is the final class trial, and this time, it'll be fair. What do you mean this time? Stop with all the slander, I'm a bear in good standing, you know? If there's a Mr. Fair Guy Universe contest, I'd take home the tiara every year. I'm going to win the game super fair and square. It'll make sure everyone watching at home knows... That despair is mightier than the hope. Stop talking. Enough of your tedious drivel. Begin the class trial already. <laughs> sure, sure, let's begin the trial already. I'll be waiting for you down below. Guys. So don't try to run away. <laughs> <laughs> Laughing as loudly as ever, Monokuma disappeared. <laughs> Whatever. In the name of my family. This will be over in no time. With an, inexplic an, inex an inexplicable confidence, Bianca was the first into the elevator. One by one, the others followed. Is that different? Okay, no, it was just another ellipsis. Nobody made eye contact, nobody said a word, they just disappeared in the elevator. They're all acting odd. Like they're paranoid, suspicious of each other. But you know why that is, don't you? Yeah, I think so. Well, you can tell us about it soon. At the class trial. You're right. I'm ready. Ready to win, right? <laughs> of course. I'm glad to hear you say that. And then Kyoko was aboard the elevator. We're kind of a beacon of hope for Kyoko at this point. My Beyond just her normal room. confidence. Even seeing someone normal like us stand up and continue going, I'm sure it helps some amazing like her. I started making my way towards the opening, step after step toward the gaping maw. I'd resolved that this would be the last time. I repeated to myself that there was no fear, no mystery left. I pushed the anxiety down, calmed my trembling body, and finally on steady legs... I passed the threshold and stood in the elevator. Without warning, I began to descend deeper and deeper, deeper and deeper still. Deeper and 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 deeper it fell. 